Nadezhan's murder shows that the state and the paramilitaries that are working with the state, the Sri Lankan state, are going to silence Tamil journalists by complete, you know, by murdering them. And Nadezhan was, Nadezhan is, I think, is just the beginning because other journalists have been targeted by this so-called paramilitary group that's now working with the Sri Lanka army. And uh, they have already started character assassination, saying that this journalist works for the LTT. And in the past it has been the practice to uh, say that a journalist works for the LTT or supports the LTT and silence him by, you know, posing the threat of jail by accusing somebody. If somebody is accused of, you know, collaborating with the LTT, then he's, he can be jailed. So, and, uh, and it also reminds me that in 2000 October when Srinivas Rajan was killed, he was a leading um, journalist in Jaffna. In, the, in Sri Lanka's north, he was immediately branded an LTT that you know as an as an LTT member. The single nationalist and the government was tried to say that he was a member of the Liberation Tigers and that therefore the killing was justified. So this uh, we find a certain trend of trying to say that somebody was working, writing for the LTT and then that's why he was killed, that, like justifying. The point is that a journalist has a right to have his views and it does not mean that he can be killed for holding those views. But in this case, Tamil journalists working in the war zones are being unjustly accused of being sympathizers of the LTT, to character assassinate them first and then really terminate, to really kill them, murder them. So Nadeshan's uh, murder seems to be the beginning, you know, and uh, and I can see that they, this paramilitary group that has the full backing of the government uh, that has links with other paramilitary groups that are working with this with the government, the Sri Lankan government, uh, targeting other journalists who are who may speak the truth about what's what's really going on. Nadesan wrote an article very critical of the government accusing it of backing these paramilitaries in the east, in the in in the place where he lived. And next day is, he was shot dead. And similarly, I have received threats after his murder through uh, my friends have been called up and told to inform me that I should count my days. And uh, another particular correspondent who worked, a, correspondent, a journalist who works, worked for the government paper has been threatened because he also writes for he works for, for example, the Tamil Nadu. So, the things have, I think, uh, the murder of Nadeshan, uh, this very senior journalist, shows that these people are not going to stop at anything. Because, you know, they were, they had the audacity to kill a very senior journalist, which means that they have no scruples about scruples about killing anybody. So it, the situation is really bad. So, what fact, um, under these conditions, uh, is it uh, wise for you to go back to Sri Lanka? Yeah, my work is there and. Uh, uh, that's my place, is I have to be there and uh, somebody has to do the work. It may be the most foolish thing to do, but 
that's where my work and and that's that's what I have to do because if everyone leaves then they are that's precisely the aim of the people who killed Nadesan. Or they want that killing to scare everyone away from this from writing the truth or what's going on. If everyone goes into exile, that means that they are going to there there won't be anyone to write the truth. So they want to terrorize uh, Tamil journalists with these murders so that no one will write the truth. So I think that's basically the idea. So we have to fight this back by by going there. The risk, uh, journalism comes with getting killed is part of the job. You know, it's an occupational hazard. <laughs>